Tvameva mata ca pita tvameva Tvameva bandho ca sakha tvameva Tvameva vidya dravinam tvameva Tvameva saravam mama deva deva I bow to the Divine Mother in all forms and in your forms. I would like to read to you a saying which, again, unfortunately, I just talked about recently in another talk. I seem to be cursed with this here lately. But uh, it's a beautiful saying anyway. It's number 291 in this book, Conversations with Yogananda. You have to individually make love to God. He ins insisted to us. Keep your mind at the Christ center in the forehead. As you work, remember also that you are working for God and Guru. Always chant mentally, God and Guru, God, Christ and Guru. Many come here then pass their time in idle gossip and joking. Well, they won't get God. There are many rats and mice living in the canyon on this property also, but they aren't advancing spiritually. They aren't finding God. It isn't just being here that will get you to Him. You have to make your own effort. Each one of you in the end stands alone before God. Now, this is a very important teaching because even when you go into the spiritual path, join an ashram, you find that some people are lazy. I know that there was this... this uh, brother disciple of my guru in his ashram when he was a young boy, a young man, I should say. And the, this disciple was uh, sort of, he figured, well, I've come to my guru and that's all, he'll, he'll do the work for me. And he would say, Nidra Samadhi Stiti, sleep too is Samadhi. But uh, um, my guru was not like that at all. He kept his mind here, he kept himself apart from people and he just Went at it. Don't think that just because you're born into a spiritual family, that you're living in a spiritual environment, that you're living in an ashram, that you found a great guru. Don't think that's what it's all about. It's still you who have to do it. There was some guru, who, some woman, she is considered a saint. I frankly don't really see it. But she has told disciples, don't, you don't have to meditate. I'll meditate for you. What kind of teaching is that? You must make the effort. Sure, they will do what they can for you. But uh, how do you find God without... It's, not, it's just not sort of coasting down to the sea. You have to work hard at it. And so the gurus usually come and put out a great deal of effort in order to find something they have already. That's the funny thing about it. But my guru said, if you do even a hundredth part of what I've done, you will find God. Ramakrishna said the same thing. And the truth is that you couldn't begin to put out the kind of energy they do. They show the heroic quality it takes in order to find God, so that we may about do with our little best just, just a hundredth part of that. The goal, the work of the disciple is to do his best. Don't worry about it. Don't say, oh, but look at my guru, how hard he worked. Look at Yogananda. Look at Lairi Mahasaya. Look at um, Ramakrishna. Look at these great saints. Well, they had that when they were born. It takes all your strength. This is what my guru put it this way. 50% of the path is the grace of God. 25% of the path is the guru's effort on your behalf. 25% is your effort. You have to put out that, and it's got to be 100% of your effort, but not 100% of what it takes to reach God. You have to do your very best. And yet, finally, God's grace is the only thing. And God's grace is manifest through the Guru, who does his bit also for you. But ultimately, you must stand alone before God. Don't think that being in the right place at the right time with the right people is going to give it to you. You have to stand before the opinions. First of all, the biggest test that you get is your family, usually. One 
brother disciple of mine, also his friends, they came actually to, to kidnap him and to force him, to take him forcibly away from the hermitage of my guru. My guru, he knew what was going to happen, so he sent this disciple on a mission to another community, another hermitage. So they, when these people came, they didn't find him there. But usually it's your family. And it's very difficult. I know that for a while, for, well, quite a while actually, every time I would visualize, try to visualize my guru, my father's image came in the way. The uh, teaching, the authority, the, the uh, lessons that they give you from your childhood, these are important and they, they're a part of our psyche. But remember this that they are your parents for this incarnation only, whereas God has been your father for all eternity. One time, my guru, my guru's father said to him something slightly disparaging of Sri Yukteswar. My guru said of all things, he said, physical birth is something, spiritual birth is everything. If I hear you ever one more time say one word against my guru, I disown you forever as my father. He could be fiery. But you know, that's how to find God, too. Don't think, well, I love my parents and I don't want to hurt their feelings. Listen, you're going to hurt their feelings a lot more if you dis disappoint the karma that brought you a devotee into their family. They don't know it. But if you find God, they will be enormously blessed. Everybody who finds liberation for seven generations, either direction, his relatives are freed. Not freed completely. It's sort of like I, I asked a, a saint this question down when I was in Buchira di Palaim in Andhra Pradesh, visiting him. He was a great saint, a disciple of Ramana Maharshi. Of, yeah, Ramana Maharshi. And uh, I asked him what this meant. He said, well, it doesn't mean that they will be liberated, but it's as if when you... Uh, become the emperor, all his family become, they receive a high position in society. And so it is that, that uh, when you find that kind of freedom, then all those people, generations before and ahead of you, and most saints don't have children, but then their brothers and their siblings, children and so on, all of these are greatly blessed. This is why in Tibet it's an ancient tradition that one person in the family at least should become a monk. And it's a good tradition to have. To seek God is the greatest karma, good karma for your family that you can have. And the family is the first one to fight against it. I used to think, because I had that struggle, I used to think if I, if, I, if I had become an alcoholic, they would have just clicked their tongues and said, what a pity. But they wouldn't have fought the way they did fight to try to drag me away making fun of me and making fun of my path and all the things that I believed in. Until finally I had to write my father too. I said, listen, don't force me to make such a choice. I, I don't want to. I love you. You're my father. But if you force it upon me, you're my father for only one incarnation. God has been my father for eternity. How can I have a choice? Don't force it on me. Silence. He never said anything more. He never could approve. But I think bit by bit he began, began to appreciate what I had done. And I think that my example helped him. He was a good man. He was a very good man. In his way, he was a great man. Very humble, very honest. But he couldn't understand this whole concept of loving God and having a guru and... Uh, needing still to learn after you become an adult and all these things. Well, remember, if you want to know God, you have to stand before the world. And don't think, well, but it's so hard. My mother loves me so much. How can I go against what she wants? You're going to have the same test to face in your next life, and your next one, and your next one. These are tests everybody has to go through. But if you are strong in yourself, do have this comforting thought in mind also, that you are doing the best thing for them.
that you possibly could do. What would it do for them if you went out and became a millionaire and became a famous person and a politician and everybody looked up to you? It would be ego bomb for them, maybe, but it wouldn't give them what you, what is the most important thing of all. It wouldn't give them God. So, have the strength to stand on your own feet. Don't let other people tell you what you ought to do. The world will do its best to take you away. The world will do its best to feed you its own values. The world may scoff at you. They used to scoff at me when I was trying to build Ananda. How many relatives and old people with experience in the world? After all, I'd lived my, my life as a monk. I didn't know material things. And they used to just ridicule me for my naivete because I didn't know worldly things. But I knew that God would show me what I had to do, and he always did. And I used to resent, I have to admit, having to earn money in order to support this community, get this community started, because I never wanted money. And yet here I had to think in terms of earning pots of money to buy a place where hundreds of people could live, to build it, to buy the land. No, it wasn't easy. And there was a time I remember when um, a local contractor, a building supplier, tried to take all my land away from me. He, I just stuck to my guns. I honored my promises. But at the end, I have to admit that during that time, I kind of resented. I thought, Divine Mother, why are you making me do this? I don't want money. Why do I have to think in terms of money? But I discovered in the end that my gain was not money. Yes, I got money, but I didn't keep it. That wasn't for me. My gain was the strength I developed from doing what I had to do. When you do your duty, as Sri Krishna tells Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, if you do your duty, that is the right thing. Acting for God is just as good, my guru used to say, as meditation. When you do things for God without any personal desire, you need the two. You need to balance the two. You need time to meditate, otherwise it's hard to think of God. Because when you're just working all the time and not meditating, then your mind becomes restless. But we need the two of them. And if we can just be firm by our own values, don't let other people sort of trick you into thinking that, well, everybody thinks this way. Who are you to think differently? Well, be strong by your own conscience. The world will go its own way, and it's almost always wrong. Be true to yourself and you can help hundreds. They say that one moon gives more light than all the stars. One person who comes close to God even becomes a blessing to other people. And you find that even complete strangers, somehow, I don't know how it happens, but they come up to you and say thank you. They feel that in some way you have blessed them. Well, you didn't even necessarily try but they feel that emanating from you. The more you have of God, the more you can help everybody. Much more than ever you would by just giving them things, jobs, possessions. This is why the Brahmin is above the Katya. The Kshatriya, how will I pronounce it in the Bengali way, Kshatriya, but it's in India, Kshatriya. The Kshatriya is, uh, he does good for others in material ways, in outward ways, in thing ways. A Brahmin, a true Brahmin, is one who has understood that the best he can do is help them to have divine consciousness. The more you have of God in your meditation, the more people feel this. You know, when I came back from India, I was forced to live with my parents for some time. And it was a great pain for me. I had lived in an ashram. And to have to go from serving God to serving my parents, I didn't like that. It was a great misunderstanding that I was, had forced upon me. I'm grateful for it now because it was that which enabled me to do the work that my guru had told me I must do. 
But in the beginning, it looked as if my life was destroyed. But it was so interesting to me to see that my mother's friends, for example, would say to her, we don't know, but we feel that he has something, and we feel blessed just being with him. Well, that's what it is. The more you meditate, the more you will be a blessing to other people, the more they will feel that blessing, and their lives will change too. And so it is that as you change yourself, you will change others. But if you let other people change you and make you live according to their values because they think this is right, you will find that instead they won't help you and you won't help them. And you will be just like everybody else, a nice person destined for another few thousand or million lifetimes. What's the use of it all? We were made for God. And for God's sakes, that's what you should be looking for. You are a child of God's. Seek Him. Seek Him alone. Go on alone. Seek your destined way by your own conscience. Joy to you. Walk like a man Even though you walk alone Why call approval once the road is known let come who will but if they all turn home the goal still awaits you go on alone follow your dreams Thank mm -hmm. you.